should probably turn this on. Just a second. <laughs> Am I going to get some of your turns? Is that okay? I've been sick for the last four weeks. I'm on my fourth antibiotic. I went down to Lake Powell with my <laughs> wife and kids, came back, and I had bronchitis, sinus infection, ear infection. All my kids were sick. They took one, one antibiotic, and 24 hours later, they, they were better. <clears throat> so if I sound a little nasally, it's, it's because I'm sick a little bit. My wife makes fun of me still. Um, let's start off with a little intro. We'll just talk about a few things. I played basketball at BYU. Played basketball at UVU here when it was UVSC and it was a whole lot smaller. Uh, my parents were wonderful parents. I grew up in a wonderful home. My mom got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer when I was 17 and she passed away and it was super super hard and my little sisters were 11 they were twins had a little brother and older brother and it was really really hard on our family um, we got through that together ended up going on my mission last thing my mom said to me was going on a mission uh, four months later I turned my papers in and went and I did a really really hard thing uh, I got used I had a great mission my mission president said if you will do for two years what others won't, the rest of your life you'll get what others can't get. So I worked extra hard. He also said, the harder you work, the hotter your wife will be. It's probably not true, but it's definitely not true for the sister missionaries. Um, ended up going to uh, Madrid, Spain. So I played with the Atlanta Hawks. It was my dream come true to see how they traveled, private planes, bodyguards. I played with Jason Terry, Rashid Wallace. Uh, Steven Jackson, who, uh, who was a character, uh, um, Sharif Abdurrahim, quite a few players. I got drafted with LeBron and Dwayne, Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, uh, greatest draft class ever, um, great players. I ended up going to Russia. Um, never thought I'd go to Russia. The two places my wife said we're not going to go is Israel and Russia. Got a great offer from Russia. Oil was great. Connery was doing well. And um, I needed to make some money. I didn't, want, I didn't want my wife to have to cut hair for a living the rest of her life, which she did. Thus, when I was at BYU, I had bleached blonde hair and looked like Eminem, um, which I totally regret now. But it was, it was in back then. I uh, went to Russia, and this is kind of where our story starts. Uh, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. My wife it was on the 16th floor of a Russian building. If anybody's been to Russia, you know it's scary, it's dark. There's not, not, a, not a place you want to go on vacation. I got off the airport, off the airplane in Shirmetova, uh, Russia. Anybody speak Russian here? Tihoches? No? I learned Russian a little bit after five years. I played basketball, played great. If I hadn't played great, they probably would have shipped me off to Siberia. That's what they do over there. I'm just kidding. Maybe. I don't know. But I, I made buckets. <laughs> I scored, and that was a good thing. So I got to be known as a pretty dang good player. I got, to, I got the opportunity to play with great teammates, Pablo Prigioni, who plays for the Knicks, Jose Calderon, who just got traded from, to the Knicks from the Dallas Mavericks, Luis Scola, who's with the Indiana Pacers, Tiago Splitter, who's with the Spurs and just got dunked on a year ago by LeBron when we were texting him. He just got dunked on. He should have jumped higher. Um, and we won a lot. We won a lot. I learned that... Uh, if you play defense and you're great at it, you don't get paid as much as the offensive players. I was really athletic and really good, but the next guy was a Lithuanian that could not jump, long hair, scraggly, not an athletic bone in his body, but he was making double that I was making. And so I quickly learned that I really need to enhance my offensive game if I wanted to make more money. So anybody that wants to play basketball, you might want to hone on the offensive skills. It pays better, just so you know. Uh, and so we're in Russia, and we're on the 16th floor of this Russian uh, building, and it's just, it's just hard. It's hard to be away from family. Uh, it's, it's super hard to be miles, thousands and thousands of miles away from your family. Uh, the first night in Atlanta, Georgia, when we got drafted and moved there, my wife cried. Uh, the first night in Spain, she cried. The first night in Russia, she cried. And the interesting, about her, the interesting thing about her is, is she's very adaptable. She's very compassionate. She's very sensitive. Um, if, if a radio song comes on that's 
that's uh, a little sensitive and talks about a certain subject, she cries in the car. And now she misses Atlanta, she wants to move there. She misses Spain, she wants to move back there. And she absolutely loved Russia. So we're on the 16th floor and she's having a hard time. We had some infertility problems for a little while and it was really hard on both of us. We both came from big families, we wanted to have big families. And she started volunteering in orphanages because one day she was reading in Matthew my yoke is easy, my burden is light, and she thought, I need to stop thinking about myself. Pretty amazing. Moscow, Russia, 16th floor of a, of a building that had two doors and probably seven locks on it. Um, and she stopped, she, she thought and she felt prompted to say to herself, I need to stop thinking about myself. Obviously, we were in Russia for bigger things than playing basketball and, and making buckets and making money. We, uh, Found an orphanage after we went through seven different ones when they stole uh, things we gave to them uh, or turned around and sold it the next day on the street. Went through seven different ones and found honest, honest people. Tatiana, who's the director of the Lubirzi Hospital. And we did amazing things. We were able to do respiratory machines and remodel the whole hospital. <coughs> it's, on, it's 45 minutes outside of Moscow. It's called Lubirzi Children's Hospital. It's home to about three million uh, kids every year and it looked like World War II. There was holes in the windows, uh, blood analysis, urinalysis machines didn't work so you couldn't properly diagnose the kids. Um, holes in the windows meant pneumonia 365 days a year, passing it back and forth to each other. Uh, there's no foster care in Russia. There's 600,000 orphans and they're deemed, they're social orphans because they've been deemed unfit. Uh, their parents have by the government, meaning alcohol and, and drugs. And so when they take them away from their families, they don't have a place to put them. So they put them in these hospitals, just like a Utah Valley Medical Center. And they stay there and stay there, and then pretty soon they're sent to, they, they're, they're evaluated and sent to a mental hospital or, or um, another hospital or an orphanage. It's a really, really sad, sad thing. So we got in and, and renovated the, ba uh, the baby hospital. News got out, I was playing basketball, I was playing really well. News got out and they did an ESPN Magazine article with me and Andre Karolinko. Uh, they offered me Russian citizenship, so I'm now American Russian, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, my Russian name is not Hansen, it's Konsen, so K-H-A-N-S-E-N. -S they had to put the K in front, I don't know why. Um, and they put me in this fur coat. So we did an ESPN <laughs> uh, article and they put me in a fur coat. And it reminds me um, about a few things. So first story, Lotus, I'm six foot five. There's no way in, in this life I'm gonna fit in a, in a Lotus. Michael Snap could fit in a Lotus. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> There's no way I'm gonna fit in a Lotus. But they put a Lotus next to me, put me in a fur coat, said this is a $125,000 fur coat, be careful, but look like Braveheart. And so I grabbed the thing, try to go Braveheart, and it was a, a guy from London. And, Anyway, it's very interesting. And every time I grabbed it too hard, the guy would come out with a comb and brush it and say, don't touch it too hard, and brave heart, don't, you know. <laughs> Anyways, article came out and I talked about my mission most of the time. I talked about how easy it was a transition for me to live in Spain and Russia and how much I loved it. Uh, many Americans go over there and they don't have Cafe Rio and Taco Bell and they're a little bit negative towards the cultures. We loved it, we made many friends, we had a fabulous time and it changed our lives. And the reason it changed our life is the best antidote I know for worry is work. The best cure for weariness is the challenge of helping someone who is even more tired. One of the great ironies of this life, he or she who serves almost always benefits more than he or she that is served. We were very much rewarded, much, much uh, more rewarded than those that we served. We hope that we help the kids. We hope that we, we um, help those that uh, we got the opportunity to, 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 to share and serve in that hospital and buy new machines and uh, analysis machines. But my wife and I, we were, we were changed forever. And it becomes addictive, the emotions you feel and you see you know, the happiness and how much hope you can give to others. So the, tr the crew came and the crew means uh, there's like five, radio, uh, five TV stations in Russia that they, they let you watch. So, so one of the crews <laughs> from the five channels came and they followed us all around. And it was, it was really weird, you know, it's a foreigner coming in and he's Mormon and they think Mormons are, you know, we churn butter and we have a lot of work to do. I'd get off the plane in Greece 
And uh, it's okay, that's my background music. And, uh, and they said, hey, aren't you Mormon? I said, yeah. And he's like, oh, how did you learn how to play basketball? No, living out in the, in the woods with no electricity. And I'm like, I think that's Amish, but and he's like, whatever. Anyways, good luck in the game. So we have a lot of work to do in the church. Um, and so the crew followed us around, and we went through and saw the whole renovation. And it was pretty amazing how many people have came together to make, make the project beautiful. And, and uh, there's this little boy. And we had made friends with a few people throughout the time. You know, anytime you play basketball and you come out uh, after a game, the fans just line up and you sign autographs. And there was this one guy who had two daughters, and he spoke perfect English, so he kind of stood out to us. His name was Igor. And he, he became pretty good friends with us. He told my wife many, many times, you have the kindest eyes. And I still remember him saying that. And so we're in the, in the hospital, and we're walking through the, the halls showing the, the camera crews uh, what we've been able to do and it was it, it, like 50 million people saw it and it was a pretty big big deal in Russia which led to a few other things but there was a, a faint cry down, down the down the hall and so I walked down there with Tatiana and I said Tatiana who, who's crying what's happening and she said oh that's Artem Artem and Ludmila and I said what's wrong with them and she said well he's two years old and this is Artem up here when he was sick He's two years old, and he has jaundice, and he needs a liver transplant. But in Russia, the law is, if you don't have a, um, a relative, a blood relative that can give you a liver transplant, it's really hard to get one. Also, if you don't have connections and money, which is a lot of the case, especially in Eastern Europe, then he's probably going to pass away. And she was bawling, crying. I said, we have to do something. We have to do something to help him. And she said, there's nothing really we can do, except for just ease his pain. And I picked up the phone, I called the two people I knew, my general manager at Dynamo. My team was owned by the KGB. Seska's owned by the Army. So they don't have private individuals like Larry H. Miller who own the, the, the professional teams. We're owned by the government. So Victor Ivanov was the head of the FSB, thus being my boss, thus that probably led to me getting a Russian passport, if you follow the trail a little bit. It's, it's nice, you know, no uh, passport lines. If you get pulled over, you just show a Dynamo card and you, you get weighed by. Fantastic perks. A um, little scary perks, you know, when, when the general manager, when Larry H. Miller comes in, I'm sure he, he gives a pep talk and he's, you know, doesn't have 18 bodyguards with AK-47s. So there's a few cons to the thing too. But I called Igor was my next phone call. And I said, Igor, is there anything we can do? And he said, Travis, I don't know if you know this, but I'm the number one liver transplant specialist in Russia. He was able to give Artem a liver transplant. That night he went, he got him on feeding tubes, got him healthy enough, he ended up having five surgeries. I still remember being done with the game, getting the phone call that there had been an auto accident and, and Artem was gonna get a liver. Um, if we will humble ourselves and stop thinking about ourselves and our problems and serve others, we could be instruments we can help others, and we can be very much rewarded. Uh, the 50 million people that saw the television article or television newscast ended up leading to Nature Sunshine. Nature Sunshine's a $500 million public traded company here in Utah. It got in the newspaper, it led to them. They have about $150 million um, revenue stream from Russia. They called us, they never had a charitable foundation before. Thus, we led into there are charitable sponsors, Sunshine Heroes. We have seven different products we sell worldwide. We take the profits from these vitamins and we pour it into two schools in Africa, 250 villages in Thailand, 50 schools in China. Um, we're going to Nicaragua in November and building a children's center. Many, many amazing things have happened because my wife on the 16th floor thought I need to stop thinking about myself. We never thought we'd start a foundation. We never thought we'd help anybody more than Artem. But it's interesting how things can lead um, down the amazing paths. I, I spoke with John, by the way, two months ago, and he asked the audience, is, anybody, is anybody's life exactly like they thought it would be? And not one person raised their hand. I promise you, your life will be nothing like you thought it would be. But it's up to you to make certain choices. That being, so our impact to date, uh, real fast, we provided clean water to 117,000 people, awarded nearly $600,000. Uh, 
uh, built two schools, done quite a few amazing things. We have a health clinic in Nepal. There were 600 people outside our health clinic in Nepal, Nepal the first day who had never, never, ever seen a doctor. Our, our, our new task is to go after vitamin A. There's up to 500,000 children around the world that uh, are deficient in vitamin A and will go blind over in the first year. You only have to distribute it to them twice. Obviously, all of us get vitamin A through different foods and fortified foods that we eat. But in the third world countries, you have rice, beans, and oil. As soon as you take one of those away, uh, vitamin becomes very, very deficient and, and especially very dangerous in, in children. So we're focusing on zero to two years and, and hopefully, hopefully distributing vitamin A in a lot of different countries. Nicaragua will be our first. All it takes is two doses a year uh, until children are six years old and it's 25 cents per capsule. Uh, the areas we're going to focus on is Latin America and Eastern Europe and Africa. Um, I got done playing basketball and I kind of, you know, was able to build this foundation with my wife and with the help of Nature Sunshine and their resources. I got home and I spent eight years uh, playing professional basketball and every single day I thought, what am I going to do when I'm done playing basketball? And I got done with basketball and I had no idea what I was going to do when I was done playing basketball. Uh, wrote a book. Sherry Dew called me and I, I wrote a book. Um, when she calls you and talks to you, you say, there's no way. And then after you talk to her, so you end up doing it. it. The best thing about this book is the cover. It's fantastic. I'm really good at photo shoots, fur coat, and this was my second one. They're terrible. Um, but it took five years off my life, but it was, a, it was an amazing uh, opportunity, and it was very, very difficult to put your thoughts on paper, and so I'm thankful for that opportunity. Then I uh, worked for a friend in a, in a software company, which was an amazing opportunity. My dad's been a very successful businessman, and he's really motivated me and pushed me, and so uh, we started a private equity company. We uh, have invested in real estate, prop, uh, property management company, but lately a finance company. And a few things I've learned, and this is why I bring this up, a few things that I've learned um, in business. I'm not very good at it. I'm really good at shooting jump shots and setting picks. I'm really behind in business, but I'm learning, trying to learn really, really fast. So number one, stop obsessing about money. I obsessed a little bit too much about money when I was in my 20s. I wanted to provide for my family, especially my wife. I wanted to get her a nice car. That was my dream. I actually, my biggest dream was I wanted to buy a house that had a garage door opener and closer. So when I could pull up to my house, I could push it and I could drive in and I could push it again. I'd just be like, okay, I made it. That was just my dream. Um, number two, money is a byproduct of doing the right things. Money is a byproduct of doing the right things. The more you don't focus about money, the more you don't focus about your success and stress about it the easier it comes. We never th thought we'd start a charitable foundation. We never focused on the, the other aspects of it. All we want to do is help others. Number three, stop thinking about making a million dollars and start thinking about serving a million people. See mo making money as a way of making more things. Walt Disney said, we don't make movies to make money we make money to make more movies. Number five, you become like the five people you spend the most time with. Time is a commodity. You can't buy more. You can't buy it back once it's gone. Be very careful how you spend your time. Spend it wisely. Um, some of us don't have five amazing friends to spend time with. Some of us don't have five amazing uh, relatives and our parents haven't made great choices, our friends haven't made good choices, our brothers and sisters haven't made good choices. I lost my mom to pancreatic cancer when I was 17. I lost my little brother to prescription drugs uh, just under two years ago. Uh, I, I know that Elder Iring said, you know, we have all these different things in common. Our, we have, we're so different in so many ways. Tall, short, big, small, smart, not so smart. Um, but the one thing we all have in common is we're going to have a lot of challenges. Every single one of us is going to have challenges. And how you deal with those challenges, really, uh, a lot of it depends on who you surround yourself with. If you don't have five amazing people to surround yourself with, buy books. Spend time with John, by the way, audio CD, in your car. That's how you become like great people. Find five people that you absolutely admire and love and want to be like. And take the good things that they have done in their lives and try to be like them. 
I've had w unbelievable, amazing people that have shaped my life. The choices I've made, plus hanging on to an unbelievable wife, has led to where I am now. Um, when my, when my uh, mom passed away, um, it was really, really hard on me. I was a young kid. It was really hard. Everybody loves their mom, right? Everybody loves their mom. And uh, years ago, I was afraid of wanting anything. I thought wanting would lead to trying, and trying would lead to failure. But now, after pushing and working and waking up every day and trying to be better, I can't stop wanting. I want to travel the world. I want to be invited to the White House. That would be kind of cool, even though it might not happen. I want to... Um, I want to start an amazing company so we can provide amazing jobs to amazing employees and an amazing culture. I want to surprise myself uh, by the things I'm able to do. I want to keep losing but get over it. Uh, I've lost a lot of games in my, in my day, but I don't remember those. I just remember the ones I won. I want to be generous and kind the way people have been with me over my course of my life. It's not that I will get all these things, but I just absolutely love that I have the possibility to get these things. And I think that's what education is all about. I think that's what a career is all about. Just the possibility that you can become something. The possibility that you can study what you want or be like somebody or accomplish what you want. Start a foundation, build a health clinic in Nepal. Start a business. It's pretty cool. You should all be very, very, very thankful for all these opportunities and possibilities because I've been places in the world and they don't have these opportunities and possibilities. In Nepal, if your dad's not a doctor, you can't be a doctor. You're marked. If your dad's a blacksmith, you can be a blacksmith. And that's about all you can accomplish. Individually, we are weak and together we are strong. That's a model that we have quite a bit. Um, individually, you know, we started Sunshine Heroes, but we quickly learned if it was just my wife and I and the four kids, we can't accomplish very much. But as we were able to grow and get more people involved, we were able to accomplish a lot more. So if you ever do anything, make sure that you develop leadership skills so you can motivate others and you can get them to believe in you. Um, also, together we are weak, but to, uh, individually we are weak, but together we are strong. How much time do I got? Am I good? Um, Try here. My wife was at Lakers Junior High. Um, and this is kind of a leadership, little values, little morals. She's at Lakers Junior High, which is a local school. And she was walking out, got done with cheerleading practice. She was the cheerleader. And uh, I was a basketball player. Amazing how that works out. And um, she's walking out, and, and her group of friends were going to uh, Ashley's house. And she had another little friend that was with her. But a group of guys, with a couple girls, pulled up in a truck. It was one of those Broncos, high-rise Broncos with the bro bar, people hanging out the sides, you know, typical high school kids. And they pulled up and they said, come with us, come with us. And she said, okay, I'm going to see you later. Her friend won't name names. And she started going towards, towards these friends. And my wife ran over to her, grabbed her, and said, no, 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 she's going to come with us. Years later, many, many, many years later, and I didn't know this story, we're at Target. And we, are, we only came back for Utah for about a month or two months in between my whole career while we were living everywhere. And, and uh, this girl came up to her and said, hey, Lurie, 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 you saved my life. And I said, what? And he said, oh, no, I shouldn't say this, but oh, it's so good to see you. But I just was remembering you last week, and you just totally changed the course of my life. And do you remember that time we were at Lake Ridge? I was going to go with those kids. And I knew that what they were going to do, and they weren't going to do things that were right. And you came and you grabbed me. I hope you all remember that story that you should all be leaders, you should all be motivated, you should all do the things that you know what to do, and then you should take someone with you. You have the many, many opportunities to inspire others, and you can inspire them for bad, or you can inspire them from good. You can change people's life, you can change the course of, of the road they're headed. My wife has taught me many things, I'm glad I hitched my wagon to a good girl. Um, I'd probably be in jail and a Ute fan if it wasn't for her. So one more story, see if it pulls up and I'll play a video. Carry on 
things will work out. If you keep trying and praying and working, things will work out. They always do. If you want to die at an early age, dwell on the negative, accentuate the positive, and you'll be around for a while. I love positive people. Um, I absolutely love to be around them. Negative people suck light. Positive people are awesome. I have gr I've had good coaches, and I've had great coaches. I've had a couple coaches that made me want to quit. Uh, they were rude. They were bad. I've had a coach after I tore my Achilles. I worked my, my tail off to come back and rehab. I was back in six months. Came back, went into Russia. Um, and he said to me the first day, he walked up to me and said, your face is fat. You got two kilos on your face. You need to lose two kilos on your face. Go home, fire your personal trainer, fire your doctors because you're, you're out of shape. Um, we went and ran in the hills. I'm super competitive. I'm a little, I used to be a little crazy. Now I'm a lot more calm after four kids. And I went up to him and I said, listen, your job is to win games. I promise you I know how to win games. So you can play me or you can, and I probably, probably didn't say the proper words. I probably said, you know, play me or don't play me, maybe. Probably added a little bit more color. First game, scored 26 points. After that, he played me every time. Um, people will try to suck your light. Don't let them. Don't let them knock you down. Be tough. Be strong. Uh, last thing I have, I'll end on words from my wife because she's amazing. She's much smarter than I am anyways. She wrote a few words in this book. And she wrote them to our kids. We have three little boys and we have a little adopted little girl who's a... Uh, who's a Caucasian and half African American. She's super cute. She likes her dad a lot. Something about dad and, and, and their little daughters. There's a special connection. These are Larie's words and counsel to our children and me and I find this advice of absolute importance for anyone striving to find peace in their lives. When things get, get hard and discouraging, never ever give up. You are powerful beyond me measure Dreams are blueprints of our future. We need to dream to succeed, never ever stop dreaming. Love yourself. You're a child of God, a prince and a princess of a righteous king. You are royalty. Be confident. Confidence is priceless possession. You are one and only. Be proud of who you are. Be compassionate and giving. Be an instrument in his hands. Help others along the way and give more than you take. Try to put yourself in the shoes of others. Forgive and forget. Learn from your mistakes. Look at the beautiful creations around you. Enjoy nature and the sunsets. Always, always remember we can be together ever someday. I love you and I'm always with you. I'm your mother, your wife, I'm your friend, and I'm so proud of you. These are powerful wor words from a, from a little Orem Hyde cheerleader who uh, traveled around from Orem to Atlanta to Madrid to Prague to Egypt to Russia and back. She's amazing. And uh, we've been able to do amazing things, and we're just starting. Um, I know you can do anything you want to do. I'm telling you. I've had great coaches that told me you can be anything. Coach Rose is so talented because somehow he figures out a way to think that you're better than you are. So, so somehow you enter the game like, oh, I can kill this guy. And really, he's probably better than you. But he, he, has this, he has this unique talent. And I've had other people that made you feel, feel like you're not very good. Surround yourself by positive people to make you feel good about yourself. Because inside every one of you is something super, super special. You should have seen me, 16 years old, concave chest. Uh, my tan was equivalent to a Seven Peaks white tube. It was really nasty. And I think we've accomplished amazing things, all because we believed. And, uh, and we worked hard and strived to be better every day. Thank you for having me. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We're actually going to go ahead and open it up for questions if you're okay with that. So if anybody has any questions, um, please wait for the mic to get to you. We are recording. So does anyone have anything they want to ask Travis? Did you? Just one moment. When you were talking about your foundation, um, I was a little confused. Is it Nature Sunshine or what is the name of your foundation? It was Little Heroes when we first started. And due to our partnership with uh, Nature Sunshine, we've changed the name now. So it's Sunshine Heroes Foundation. It's going about eight years questions? now we've been doing it. Pretty fun. Do we have any other questions? 
It's a lot like business. The problem is you just don't get to keep the money at the end. You just give it away. Anything else? Travis, do you want to show your Oh, yeah, let's end with your that. Video? Yeah, if that's okay. Enough. <laughs> Too late. Oh my God.